Hello, this is your host Preet, and I'm going to show you how to use semaphores uh, inside interrupts. So what I have here is a one second interrupt that is going to be called every one second. Now, just to limit the scope of this tutorial, I have a library function that is going to call this function every one second using interrupts, using a timed interrupt and I have a task here. So what I want to do is I want to know when this one second interrupt is uh, called and I want to know inside this task. So what I have so far is a semaphore handle called binary semaphore and inside the main function I create the binary semaphore using free RTOS API. This function is uh, my library function which I use to call this function every one second. And then I create my task and I start the scheduler. So let's see how this works. So inside my task, I'm going to check if I can take my semaphore. So let's run this demo as is and see what happens first. So this is terminal window and you see that we're getting this tick, tick, tick and so on uh, printed every one second. Now let's go into the code to see how this works. And if you notice, I really only have less than 10 lines of code here. Um, one line is here, second line, third line, four, five, and six. So there's not much to it, but uh, there's a lot to understand. So uh, let's start with the basics. We have the semaphore handle here. I called it binary semaphore. And in my main function, I created the binary semaphore and this function is getting called every one second and because this function is getting called from inside of an interrupt I am being careful to use the free RTOS API that ends with from ISR so you have to use this otherwise your system will crash um, the first parameter to XMI4 give from ISR is binary semaphore that's this one right here and the second parameter is null now i have a newer version of free rtos which allows me to use a null here but i will show you what else you can use in here now this task what it's doing is inside an infinite loop we just check if this binary semaphore uh, is available and if it is we just print this line on the screen so this is the simple demo that makes it all work uh, so the idea is your interrupts shouldn't be doing all the work in your interrupts you should just give a semaphore and your tasks should be waiting on the semaphore to do the work and you want to do it this way because if you're processing the interrupt and an interrupt processing takes half a second you don't want free RTOS to um, be disabled for half a second so if a task is processing an interrupt for half a second you allow free RTOS to service other tasks uh, simultaneously using the multitasking capability so now let's go over here to see what this parameter uh, can be so it's basically a variable that tells us if a task is awaken because you gave the semaphore. So a typical interrupt processing occurs like this. So let's say a task one is running and let's say now the interrupt occurs. We give semaphore. Now when this interrupt exits, we're back to task one, okay? This is typical interrupt processing. Something is running, interrupt occurs and we're back to task one where we left off now this 
parameter allows us to change the behavior a little bit. So what can happen is you can check that because you gave a semaphore, a task was uh, awakened. You can check if that occurs and you can yield from ISR. So let me find the yield API here. Okay, the function called is called vport yield from ISR. Again, because you're inside an interrupt, you have to use from ISR API. So this was our behavior before. And because you've added this, let's see how the behavior actually changes. Now this will be hard to demo, but the way it changes is let's say task one was running and ISR happens. We give the semi four and then we also do yield. Now, as a result, when we get back, we actually get back to to sem task instead of task one. Now we have changed the interrupt behavior. The interrupt when it exits, it does not go back to task one. Instead, because you yielded inside ISR, you'll actually go back to semaphore task because he was waiting on this semaphore. So this second parameter of giving the semaphore from ISR allows us to go to another task that is higher priority and it was sleeping on this semaphore. So by doing it this way versus using null over here, you basically optimize your system such that as soon as this interrupt occurs, we will immediately go to this task right after the interrupt exits. So let's compile this and I'm going to load this using the tools I have available. And we shall see that the program behaves the same way. So as you can see, still the program is behaving the exact same way. So to recap, you need a semi four handle. Inside your interrupt function, you need to give semi four from ISR. And optionally, you can check if the task is awakened. If it is, yield from ISR. Your semi four task is simply a task waiting on the semi four. This is just to wait forever. You can use a port max delay, which is truly forever. And once the semaphore is given, I print this out.